テクロススーパーテクロス数字をヒントに絵を出すほいスーパーテクロススーパーテクロスなかなかテエゴワイ300本新しい問題が300本スーパーファミコンで登場イズガルマリオの超難問も加わったピクチャークロスワールドマリオのスーパーピクロス出るんだほい Hello! In 1988, Nanashita published a prank grade puzzle that he called Window Art Puzzles. This was the earliest form of the game Picross, and it took the world by storm. But now, Picross, or sometimes known as nonograms, or paint by numbers, or cross picks, or griddlers, or pigma, or figure pick, or car carla, or edel, or cruise pixel, or logic square, or since the beginning it's taken on many names and has certainly made its footing in modern gaming. I mean, you can pretty much find any flavor of Picross that appeals to you. One such example, Hatsune Miku Picross. But what was the first one? What was the game that started all of this? Well, in 1995, Nintendo was the first to digitize this game worldwide in Mario's Picross for the Game Boy. A few months later, they released Mario Super Picross for Japan only on the Super Famicom. This was also one of the few games that actually used the Super Famicom mouse. Wait, I should try something real quick. We have our Type C dongle with the mouse plugged into it. So if we just plug it into the Switch, And then we move the mouse around. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Like Nintendo would ever do that. So, yeah, technically the Game Boy one was the first one, but Mario Super Picross was the first console Picross. And we've already had our hands on the Game Boy Picross for years. So, what was in this exclusive version that had to be hidden away? What secrets did it hold? What was so taboo that they knew the worldwide market couldn't handle it? Well, let's go through each puzzle and see what was so mind melting that they had to wait all the way to 2020, 25 whole years later, to let the West finally have access to this historic Picross game. But before that, let's unbox this 1995 copy and see exactly what we were missing out on. All right, just uncovered this bad boy from an ancient burial ground. We have Mario's Super Picross for the Super Famicom. So let's crack this thing open, see what's inside. First, we'll get some good looks at the box. We got the front, the side, the back, the other side, the bottom, and the top. Let's see what we would have gotten if we lived in Japan in 1995. All right, we got the manual, which we'll save for last. A couple pieces of documentation. I think this is like, feels like receipt paper. For the copy of the receipt? Oh, there's like copy A, copy B. The Super Famicom cartridge itself. Another piece of documentation, which I guess is about the, the AC power adapter. Let's go through this manual. It's a little beat up, a little fold there, but not too bad for covering it in an ancient temple. All right, so it is gonna be in Japanese, and I'm sure you can find scans and translate them a lot better than I could. We got some explanation. Interesting Mario in Wario art. Breakdown of all the controls and how the level select screen works. Oh, it's a breakdown of all the levels. Also, very clearly, you can use the mouse. Some more instructions. I guess like a tips and tricks, more tips and tricks. I guess some Wario tips and tricks. And what I can only assume is the credits and the back. All right, pretty cool. So we start the game and immediately hits us with a strange song that seems to be a mesh of different glasses and rocks being smashed together. It's an interesting song, but I guess it works since the whole shtick of this game seems to be like a discovery geology thing, since the main cursor is a hammer and chisel after all. Now, if I wait on the tile screen, it does have a quick instructional video, which I can't understand the text, but it seems to be a good visual demonstration on how to get started. Oh, and there's actually a second title video of a guy going absolutely nuts on a puzzle that reveals a super up close shot of Mario's face. I sure hope there's lots of Mario characters and sprites considering the game is called Mario Super Pay Cross. Now, blurring out the top file here, but it is nice that they gave more than one save slot, which is a luxury even for some. Modern Picross games. Oh, and look in the background. There's more Mario themed puzzles. Whoa, now this is a rare Mario. Very high def. Okay, let's check this first option. Oh, okay, it's just a tutorial again. All right, level one.
Oh, now this is a song, very mysterious. So right off the bat, we're presented with these two options before every puzzle. The first one lets us reveal a random column and row, and the other one is to go in with no hints at all. So the main loop seems to be just Picross, of course, but additionally, there's a 30 minute time limit, and every time you mess up, it takes away from that time exponentially. So if you run out of time, you lose, and you have to start all over again. Now, I personally like to chill and not worry about rushing while playing Picross games, but as long as you're somewhat careful, you don't even really have to think about the timer, but just make sure you pause the game before walking away and going to the bathroom. Okay, it seems this first level starts out with some 5x5 puzzles, and then goes into some 10x10s. In the first batch, uh, it seems to just be katakana, which is like part of the Japanese alphabet. So almost immediately, I can kind of see why they wouldn't want to bring it over. They would probably have to do some extra work to localize these puzzles. But at the same time, it would be pretty cool to just keep these and teach the kids some Japanese. So I want you guys to simmer on this level complete music for a second. really lends itself to the mystery of this game. What kind of secrets does this game hold? Oh, and here we are at the ninth puzzle on the first level and we have our first piece of art. Let's see what they give us. Hopefully it's Mario. I mean, this is 1995. These guys should be geniuses when it comes to pixel art. I mean, look at this Mario. He's immaculate. Oh, it's just a couple dots. Oh, it's stars. Okay, that's cool, I guess. You know, you gotta keep it simple for these, uh, for the early levels. So it seems each level has 12 puzzles. The rest of the first levels are a boat, a penguin, and a mermaid. Oh, now look at this Mario. So it seems every time you complete a level, you get this little animation of what I can only guess is Mario congratulating you on a good job and then bowing. Oh, and what's this? A Wario in 1995? I guess this was during his true villain era since Nintendo was really trying to make him a staple during this time. I mean, he only did first appear uh, three years prior in Super Mario Land 2 in 92. I have no idea what he said, but it seems he has an alternate page of Mario's. Oh, and in his, the timer goes up. What happens if you hit the wrong blocks. Oh! So it seems this won't tell you if you get something wrong. So you could get stuck for some time if you miss something. We'll come back to these later. Alright, seems like we're getting into the bulk of it now. But let's spend some time and go through every single piece of Picross art. Starting with level 2. So we have glasses, a dolphin, a fish, a small fox thing, a mailbox, floppy disk, maybe a reference to the drive of the original Fabicob, a uh, temple I believe, Lock and key, a rocket ship, a clock, American football helmet, and a slot machine. And that's all for level two. I think it's safe to say now that there won't be any real theming per level. Also, no Mario's yet. But hey, that's a cool Luigi in the background there. Level three, a magnet, satellite dish, rulers, plug and outlet, onigiri, a portrait, like a beer opening key thing, I think. Australia, a sewing machine, a flask, a badge, and an ambulance. Moving on from level 3, we go to level 4. A golf hole, a fan, a vulture, that one pipe game from Super Mario 64 DS, diver, a shirt and tie, a lifter, a deer, those like uh, magnifying opera glasses, a music box, a harp, mother and child, and that's it. Once again, so far, no the obvious theming, but I mean, we are coming up on halfway through the game and still no Mario stuff. I mean, like, throw us a mushroom or something, you know? Level 5. To start it off, we have, uh, I have no earthly idea. A microscope, dog and street post, a dude with a gun, doghouse, a bug, headphones, a strawberry, a news reporter, a hot air balloon. I believe this is called gate ball or something. An escalator. Oh wait, I see it now. This first one, it's a dino skull. See like that's a mouth and the eye and nose, which this is so fitting because Yoshi is the background image for this and Yoshi is a dinosaur. <sighs> Okay, level six, a gorilla, fisherman, Easter bunny, a thinking dude, Tokyo Tower, Howlin' Dog, that wind rooster thing, a trombone, green pumpkin, turtle, demon, and a camel dude. Moving right along, level seven, a bird, some sort of sea creature, a fountain, a seahorse, a palm tree and frog, spider, flounder, balancing ball guy, origami, a dove, a lighthouse, and a praying mantis. Level 8. Oh, look, Princess Peach in the background for these ones. Uh, grid? Wait, it's a P? I don't... A what? Oh, it's Picra. Oh. A camera. A trash can. A Loch Ness Monster. Milkshakes. A castle. A big fox. The Capitol building. A building. A flower. Clock. And a lamp. Almost there. Level 9. Oh. 
basketball net, eggplant, palm tree, soccer dude, a lamp, teapot, different flower, big fish, the king's head from like playing cards, motocross dude, eagle, and a woodpecker. Going absolutely nuts on that tree. All right, last main level, level 10. Still no Mario. <laughs> Piana, another flower, a coat, a tulip, a mill, I think, dude on a bike, a samurai, sumo guy, and wait, I didn't beat this last one yet, could show us something super secret. Today we are going to play a bit of Picross, specifically the last level. There has not been a single Mario related Picross puzzle. So what I'm hoping is that at least, at least the very last level will have like Mario's face or something. Oh wow, we got a 25 by 20? Oh my god, okay. Uh, well that makes this last row pretty easy. Of course, they're all ones. Oh. Leaves us- what? Oh, there's already two there! Okay, well that makes that pretty easy. Basically in the home stretch here, it seems like a walking... Squidward man? Or maybe it's a bunny bat facing the other? Okay, I don't know yet. Oh! Too far? That just gave us a huge penalty. Oh! That finishes off this side. Okay, it's gonna be a jockey. <laughs> We're willing to bet on that one. Can't squeeze a three there. can squeeze a three here. And that's it! Alright! Well, no Mario, but it's kinda cool. Gonna be a jockey, right? Yep. Dope. It's kind of disappointing that they didn't have a single Mario puzzle in the Super Mario Picross. You know, this is the second one that they made. And I have to imagine they also made it alongside the other one because they released within a couple months. Congratulations! It's a me, Mario. Oh, special. Like special levels? He's pointing off. More special levels. Now these ones are going to be the Mario ones, right? Yeah, it's Mario's portrait in the background. All right. This is probably going to take a while to get all the rest of these done, so we're going to move on to something else. You'll probably see the rest of this soon in the next video. All right. Oh my god. This took so much longer than I have ever could have thought. Not to spoil anything, but if you thought this game might be lacking a number of puzzles, then stay tuned. <laughs> but anyways, here's the art for a special level. A boat, paintbrush and can, ice skates, binoculars, a mountain, a train, a bee, which kind of looks like the bee fly enemy in Mario Land 2. Uh, yet another flower, a guitar dude, a pyramid, thinks. And a spilled bean can? Alright, now let's finish this last special puzzle and see if it has a cutscene for us. Well, okay, it's a ribbon dancer, which, you know, still don't know Mario in Super Mario Picross. But, uh, let's see what Mario has to say. Okay, we- I still don't know Japanese. But hey, we got the credits! So I guess in all of the Mario puzzles, there's not a single Mario puzzle? As these credits are rolling, let's not forget about Wario, which has an entire second half to the game. So maybe, just maybe, we'll still see something Mario yet. Alright, Wario's level one. An island, I think? A foot? A fish? Wait, no, a bomb! A monkey? Zicada? A swirly? A robber? Doggo? A sarcophagus? A tent? Umbrella? And skyline. And let's see this Wario congrats screen. And, uh, okay, he has one text, but okay, yep, that's fine. Level two! A starry skyline? Hermit crab? Birds? Shield? Moon man? Exit door? Africa? Uh, one of those Dorama things? Fish! Big eye fish! Quaff man! And a doghouse. Level three! Puffer fish! Butterfly! Flying fish! Sun guy! Ant guy! Money bag, the Kappa guy, lizard, shadow man, mousy, grave bat, skunky, level four, beard guy, faucet, magic carpet fella, mask man, tadpole, see no evil, a basketball fella, speak no evil, hippo, tiger, hear no evil, and a ghosty. Level five. Okay, we're gonna start seeing a lot of Japanese specific things here. We'll go over some of them towards the end, but for now, we'll just see what Google Translate has to say. Shogi, owl, dinosaur, a pewter, Hot man, flamingo, catfish, turkey dinner, a monkey, a dodo, the grim reaper, and a chameleon. Level 6. Tea, queen, tanuki, fish bones, traveler dude, panda, smoking pig, birdie, moon man, mole guy, hurdle guy, and maestro. Level 7. Raptor, croc, ostrich, viking man, witchy, pegasus, the americas, and lakitu, lakitu! <laughs> Finally, 
It only took 211 puzzles so far. And we finally have a definitive Mario character. Oh man. Okay, turtle stack. This one says Co, and then in parentheses Wario Land. So I guess I'm some dudes from Wario Land here. A steer and a piggy bank. Level eight. Rockin' dude, chimpkin, silly dog, clown, uh, Bizo Wario Land, Tanuki again, commuters, squib, frog, not Gabotin Wario Land, and Gorilla. Level nine. Kentaro Ame, headband octopus, alien, hacker, rock paper scissors, whale, tattoo man, Kirikuri Wario Land, giraffe, bald Wario. Wait. Hey, another Mario puzzle. Moose and Yukio and level ten. But we all know there's. At least another special level. A bull with a lid. A ka. A bear. Kawa. Whale. A bee. An excavator. A Buddha. A sheep. Scorpion. Fishy. And a horsey and carriage. And guess what? Right after that, there's another special level. Big fish. Squirrel. Beach. Grasshopper. Lion. Hat tanuki. Uh, lufa? Scale. Horse. Princess Kaguya. Flower. And seal. And if you thought that'd be it, you were wrong. There's an ultra level. A waitress. A koala, a seal can, backpack, funny cat, baby, bike guy, and a wolf. And surely this is it. But there's an additional secret menu with 12 more. Big wheel back, shogun, boxing gloves, stopwatch, chick, coffee cup, no smoking sign, pelican, lucky cat, kaminari sama, snowman, and a basketball guy. Surely there's no more than an additional two secret worlds, right? Well, if you click Mario's eye, there's actually another secret puzzle. There's Wario's face. And Wario's face unlocks Wario's secret menu. But wait, what's this? They're all mostly Mario and Wario images. So for the rest of these, instead of saying like Mario's eye, we'll see what the translate has to say. Bad guy's mark. It's so bad. Bad guy's name. Beautiful beard. My momage. My Mimi. Yusha's mark. Beautiful Hitomi, my helmet, my bag, Chibi Wario's head, my Kaku, and now that's all the side ones done. But you actually can click on the two eyes and the nose and get three more puzzles where you get a Tsukimi, a Pansy, and something called a Bambuku Changama. And that's actually it. You can go to the save file and you'll see that it says it's fully complete and there really is nothing else for real this time. Just as a quick side note, cannot stress this enough. Some of these got so freaking hard. Some of these took hours on. Towards the end, I will not lie to you, I was cheating. I was looking up some of these puzzles because they were absolutely ridiculous. The whole thing about Picross is that I think like theoretically you always should have something that you can do to figure out the puzzle, but these gave you nothing. They gave me nothing. They took so long. But you know what? It was all worth it in the end to finally see some actual Mario Picross puzzles. I mean, it was only like 12 of them out of the 300 something puzzles. So yeah, but it's also kind of crazy that it took like, it took what till level seven on the Wario side to see a single Lakitu. Then we had to wait all the way to the end of the second secret level to finally see some Mario related Picross. It just seems, you know, I feel like the old Mario games would have been prime sprites to use as puzzles in this game, but I don't know. I mean, look at this one I made in five minutes. That's some really nice themed Picross. They really knock it out with the Zelda and Pokemon games on the 3DS. Ah, you can't even get it anymore. Anyways, onto the localization point. I wanted to go through some of these hyper-specific Japanese references and see what some of these even mean. Also, if I pronounce any of these wrong, please go easy on me. So as we saw, the first eight puzzles are all katakana, which is like Japanese alphabet, part of, part of the Japanese writing system. In level two, that one that I said that looked like a temple is actually something called the Great South Gate, which is a famous piece of Taiwanese architecture from the 1730s, which is kind of like a popular tourist attraction. In level three, there's that onigiri, which is a rice dish usually filled with something which I'm sure probably most people are aware of these at this point these donuts are great jelly filled are my favorite there's the koshi dolls which is just a wooden doll usually for children in level six the evil max thing is called a henya which is like a character of a famous female demon that represents jealousy or resentment in level 10 there's a sword guy who is actually doing kendo which is a japanese martial art in mario's special level that weird bean can thing is actually a hammer which is called uchide no kozuki which is like a wishing hammer or a lucky hammer from a few different folk tales in mario's ex level there's that one guy 
who looks like the electric guy from One Piece, who's called Raijin, who is actually the god of thunder in Japanese mythology. In Wario's level 2, there's that shield thing, which is called a Shoshenya mark, which is an indication that new drivers put on their vehicles before getting their full license. There's the Dorama doll, which is kind of like a good luck charm, which is modeled after the founder of the Zen tradition of Buddhism, who is called Bodhid Harama. In level 3, there's the Kappa, who is a weird turtle creature from Japanese folklore. On level 4, that ghosty is actually called a Tero Tero Bozu, which is usually a craft made from paper or cloth, and then hung outside on a window to bring good weather or to stop rainy days. In level 5, these pieces are from a board game called Shogi, or sometimes known as Japanese chess. In level 6, the traveler looking dude is actually called Jaizo, who is one of the big popular Buddhist monks to very much oversimplify it. In level 9, the tattoo man is actually called Toyama no Kinsan, who is a popular character in TV, books, movies, who commonly has a tattoo of a sakura tree on his arm. Yukio is the famous form of wood cutting art that you commonly think of when you think of traditional Japanese art. And this piece is most likely to be an homage to Kitagawa Utamuro, who commonly depicted women in this style. In Warrior's special level, this one is actually called Princess Kaguya, which is a reference to the Japanese folktale called Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, where a princess from the moon is discovered inside of a bamboo plant. And the very last puzzle of the game is something called a Bambuku Chagama, which is from another Japanese folktale about a tanuki that uses the shape-shifting powers. In this depiction we're looking at, it is a half tanuki and half teapot. And to sum up the story, essentially a merchant buys a teapot from a priest, goes to light the teapot, finds out it's alive as a half tanuki, half teapot hybrid, then is nice to the creature, and they do like a circus road show and become rich and famous together. So yeah, I guess it's pretty obvious, but there's a lot of Japanese specific pieces of art here, which is probably why they didn't import it. I mean, in the Game Boy 1 that did make it over here, they wound up changing, I think, 13 puzzles and obviously translating the entire game. And then it didn't even sell well. So probably when they started working on this one, they more than likely just completely abandoned the idea of localizing it and put as many Japanese references as they possibly could. So to localize this one, I can't imagine how many they would have chosen to change since it seems like every other one is a reference to Japanese culture. So I mean, it's pretty obvious why it took so long to even bother trying to bring it over here. Now you would think, even after all this reluctance to bring it over, that it would have been a complete unchanged version from the 1995 one. Well, in 2007, Europe and Australia actually got a Wii Virtual Console release, and every release after, including the Nintendo Switch Online one, has been this exact version. But what did they change? Well, out of the 300 puzzles in this game, they only changed three. Now, it'd be pretty obvious why they changed these, but it's probably not for the reasons you think. Anyways, here are the changed puzzles. For Mario Level 6, Wario Level 2, and Wario Level 5, in that order, we have Maryland Monroe, Tetris, and The Scream. I mean, what an absolute variety of potential copyright infringement. These feel pretty out there even for 95, but we're, what a weird batch of stuff to include. But yeah, and with that, I can't really think of anything else that I could possibly say about the uh, Super Nintendo Picross. Well, actually, let me go get a cup of tea and maybe something will hit me in the meantime. <coughs> Good thing I have my teapot with me that I just bought off of some priest. Hey, what are you trying to do? Ruin my patina or something? What the heck are you? Hey, I'm the Bambuku Chagama. I'm like a half tanuki, half teapot thing. That is an unbelievable coincidence. Do you want to go take edibles and join the circus? Hey, I like your chops, kid. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. 